I, we told y'all this, uh, I think it was eight months ago. We said the housing market is going to change. When we said this, everybody said it was crazy. We said the housing market is going to change and the people that's working in the service industry for the housing market will suffer. From real estate agents to banks to mortgage origination companies to the employees of these companies, so on and so forth. Yeah, now we're here. I mean, we've talked about different articles where uh, real estate agents, more than 50% of real estate agents can't pay their monthly fees to stay a real estate agent for office fees. Uh, we've talked about slowdowns in certain areas of the United States. We've talked about uh, mortgage lenders laying off people. Now it's just got to the breakneck point, I say, uh, because now these mortgage service lenders and, and Alex, you put up the article somewhere around here and then we can put up the other video uh, from when we talked about this uh, months ago, over over six months ago. Um, now, these mortgage origination people, they're doing something worse. They're laying off people, which is already bad, people losing their jobs. But the other thing is they want the signing bonuses back from the employees. So now they don't want to pay the employees. They already fired the employees. Now they're requesting that they want money back from the employees from that, that they already paid them uh, already. But Alex, I'm going to let you dive into this a little bit before I go crazy because this is insane. What you got? Yeah, I didn't know that they could do that. That's crazy. Maybe there's like some fine print that you have to read when you're, si when you're signing on to a company that as a sign on bonus but i think the article had mentioned that the mortgage companies were saying that they will exercise their legal right was it them saying that it's their legal right to demand to demand back the sign on bonuses right and yes that's what they're saying and, and usually in uh, we could talk sports we could talk military we could talk uh different avenues that pay bonus that's usually uh jargon that's in there usually when somebody pays you a sign on bonus it's up to you the employee to meet the obligation to keep that bonus so they pay you the bonus up front but you have to meet it let's say like in football and i'll give you two examples barry sanders we know you don't know who he is but barry sanders and calvin johnson two of the best football players in nfl history they signed they signed contracts that had big sign on bonuses but both of them retired prematurely. And then the team, Detroit Lions, happened to be my team, they requested that those two players pay a prorated portion back of bonus. So, of course, that don't go over well, especially when you're talking to Hall of Famers. But even in the military, the military, when you sign a, a sign-on bonus, you know, $30,000, $50,000 sign-on bonus, what happens is you go through basic training, you go through your, you know, your tech schools or whatever. And then once you get to your first assigned unit, they will give you half of the sign on bonus then, and then they will prorate the other ones over the years of service. If you don't meet those years of service, you have to pay back the bonus. So that's, that's, that's normal standard jargon. But what rarely happens, what rarely happens is you get a sign on bonus. And the employee who signed you to the sign-on bonus fires you before you meet the obligation. Usually it's because you made a mistake and left before because you didn't read the fine print. But rarely, if ever, have I seen a company fire somebody and then request that they want the money back. And then they, they did it to multiple people. So it looked like that was just part of their business model. Now they can't you know, scheme the average everyday person to refi and stuff with rates at 8%. So now we need to generate revenue. How are we going to get revenue? Oh, let's go get the money back from the people we already paid the money to. It's a sick game out there, man. Sick game out there. Yeah, that's crazy. that's crazy because like, so during a time where they needed more employees to handle the task, they hire them on luring them in with the sign-on bonus. Then now it gets slow. And so then they fire them and then get the <laughs> That's just, man, that's, that's a... Uh... <clears throat> that's devious but uh it's yeah it's it's a crazy article sound, sound like something you would do huh <laughs> <laughs> sound like something you do right? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty smart man it's pretty smart but that's crazy though because some of the like the main guy in this article um his sign-on bonus was like a hundred thousand dollars that's that's crazy and i didn't right. 
I didn't know sign on bonuses were going for that much. Like the most I had heard of was like five thousand dollars. And that was for like being a mechanic or a contractor. So a hundred thousand dollars, I can see why. I mean, if they got multiple or dozens and hundreds of people with those kind of bonuses, I can imagine that's yeah, they're hurting for that revenue. But it shows you how how much pain that these mortgage companies are feeling if because it looks like a very desperate tactic that they're taking because to go after their own employees that's like like you said they're firing them it's not like the employees are messing up so they're literally resorting to this because it, it just looks completely desperate completely desperate and right I mean, yeah go ahead go ahead yeah no it looks desperate it looks desperate, but what I want people to understand is think of this. So the mortgage company plans on being in business for years and years to come, right? Now I know people, they understand people have recency bias and they probably won't even remember this, but you're known for going after employees. Now, you know, real estate is a booming bus cycle. Now we're in a bus cycle. So in the next boom cycle, how much harder is it going to be for you to hire employees if you're doing this now? But the other part I want to point out is just think if mortgage lenders and mortgage origination companies is being this nefarious with employees, people that they hire, people that's in the network, people that they build relationships with. Why do you think they care about you as a home buyer? So if they doing this nefarious tactic against employees, the people that they sell any product to, they have, they have no souls when it comes to that. So more than likely, first time home buyers who don't, you know, reach out to people who have knowledge of the home buying process, uh, people that just depend on landlords, people that just don't want to take advice from somebody else to say, oh, my landlord knows it all. It's a 99.9% .9 chance you're getting screwed. You're getting screwed on either closing fees, origination fees, interest rates points the whole nine i mean i literally uh the, i believe it's the last property or property before last i went to the big origination company and then they quoted me and i've done business with them before they quoted me one and a half percent higher than another smaller company and the smaller company don't have the cash the revenue or anything else that this big company has but they still quoted me a, uh, a point and a half or one and a half percent less on interest rate for a property. And it was the same property. But that goes to me understanding. Go shop the rate. I don't care that somebody went into my, uh, did a query on my, you know, um, my social security number and credit report multiple times. Because that one and a half percent, especially going over a 30 year, 20 year, 15 year, that's tens of thousands of dollars that I could potentially lose just because, oh, I don't want nobody to look at my credit report. You crazy. But that's understanding knowledge in the game. But these companies are crazy. Yeah. yeah it's definitely, it's interesting because I wonder if this is just like the beginning of more pain to come because, I mean, like the article says, like, Hopefully they could survive till 2025 or something like that. Like, it'll be interesting because, I mean, we already saw what happened with banks, you know, regional banks and stuff like that. So I wonder if, if this, not the same effect, but a similar effect will happen to mortgage lenders now. Yeah. And the thing is, is mortgage lenders, they, the, I mean, you, you see, and you close many properties where, you know, they got the origination fees and all the process of fees that's where they that's where they make their money at because as you know they're going to sell off the loan but if you just you know that ten twelve thousand dollars they did for one of your properties just imagine doing it for millions this is billions of dollars we're talking about and then they went from doing millions of millions of transactions in a year's period to doing little or none you know mortgage companies was coming out the woodwork especially when interest rates were super low now interest rates are high more than 75 percent of the people have an interest rate below four percent now now interest rates are at eight percent so there's no refi traffic there's no home buying traffic so these these companies they 
one thing they don't do, they don't look around the corner. Uh, Jerome Powell telegraphed that he was going to raise rates. Did he know that they was going to get ra risen this fast? Probably not. But everybody and their mom knew that we was too low for too long. So it was going to be a hard correction the other way because inflation was running rampant. So these things, these CEOs and uh, other banks, you know, you got SBB Bank out there that did nefarious things also. But in the mortgage sector, it is insane. It's insane. And, and I believe most of them are crooked, especially the ones. They they want to try to say, we want to treat you like family. Uh, well, don't treat me like family because if family treats people like this, I don't want no part of your operation. And, and you still see it today. I get calls from these big institutions now trying to convince me that uh, refining to a higher interest rate won't cost me more money on a monthly basis. I don't even know how they fix their lips to say this, but they do. I mean, and I'm not going to say the names of the uh, industries or the companies that's called me and reached out to try to say this, to try to get me to refinance stuff when I'm sitting here at fours and threes trying to refinance to eight. It, it makes sense for me, but it's a, it's a crazy world out there. But Alex, go ahead. You can close it up on this one. Yeah. So let me say, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.